new videos every day. Life, wisdom. I'm Psyche Truth correspondent Karina Rachel, and I'm joined today by Dr. Colin Ross, an author and practicing psychiatrist in Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me. So today I want to ask a burning question. Do antidepressants really work? For somebody who's experiencing depression, what would you want them to know about antidepressants before they started them? Well, that's an excellent and an important question. And the scientific facts are very different from what you'll often hear from your doctor and from what's generally known in the culture. So we're taught, we psychiatrists, that antidepressants are powerful and effective and that it's really a life-saving intervention and that you're not doing your job as a psychiatrist if you don't offer a depressed person a medication. That's the basic teaching. And we're on the side, we're taught that depression is probably some sort of brain disease and it's due to low serotonin levels or maybe another brain chemical called noradrenaline. And that's just kind of accepted in our culture that the doctors and the scientists know that it's a low serotonin problem. It's just a disease. It doesn't have that much to do with your personality or what you've been through in life. And you take a medication. It's just like taking an antibiotic. It's going to work. Not 100%, but big percentage of the time. But that whole picture is not scientifically true. In fact, that whole picture is completely disproven by the existing science. So you wouldn't recommend then that somebody start? Well, the question's a little bit more complicated because you're in the world of practical reality. So for instance, when I worked in an anxiety disorders clinic in Canada, it was mostly people with panic attacks coming in. So I do an assessment and I'd say, well, the two options we have here are we have certain medications or we have cognitive therapy, which has got a whole evidence base showing that it works for panic attacks. Not all the time, but reasonably well. One person would go, I'm not crazy. I don't need medication. And the next person would say, well, there's nothing wrong with me. I don't need to do therapy. I'll take the medication. So people would have completely opposite viewpoints on medication versus therapy. And the bottom line is some people are just not going to do therapy. They're not interested. There's no way. Or they can't afford it, or they don't have time, or there's a million different reasons. Right. So if the person's not going to do any kind of therapy, it's either nothing or medication. In the ideal situation, when you've got time, when you've got insurance, or you can afford to pay for therapy, I'd say the number one way to go is therapy. And there's actually data supporting that, that long term, if you're depressed and you take antidepressants, you're going to do better with cognitive therapy. And on one analysis, in terms of cost, it looks like, of course, just to take a prescription is cheaper than seeing a therapist week after week after week. But once you get out to about nine months, the cognitive therapy usually is 10 or 20 sessions for depression. But the antidepressant, you keep taking and taking and taking and taking. Definitely. Around about nine months, the cost of the antidepressant catches up with the cost of the therapy. And then it keeps getting greater and greater and greater. So from an insurance company point of view, it's not true that drugs are cheaper. When we look at the evidence on how well do these medications work? So we've got the old antidepressants and the new antidepressants. And the main group of new ones is the SSRIs, which is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So they're called SSRIs. That's Prozac, Zoloft, and things like that. When you look at all the studies that are done by the drug companies, including the ones they've suppressed and not published, but you get those all, you put them together, the basic scientific fact is there's virtually no difference between drug and placebo. Hmm. People with depression, on average, their depression scores drop the same amount. The difference is tiny. And you wouldn't be able to tell the difference yourself. If you were on placebo and you were on an antidepressant, and you had the average drop in score for depression or the average drop in score for placebo, there's no way you could internally, subjectively tell the difference. Mm. So does that mean drugs don't work? No, because there's another group in the research which is called the waiting list control. That's where you don't get drug or placebo or anything. You just wait and we'll call you in a few months when a slot opens up. Now those people do worse 
than the placebo and drug groups. So both drug and placebo are clearly better than doing nothing. Both, in fact, work, but the drug doesn't work better than the placebo. Th those are the scientific facts. But the way things are set up right now, you can't go to a doctor and say, Doctor, I'd like to get a placebo, please, because nobody ever asked that question. Plus, the doctors have all these ethical problems about it's deceptive to give somebody a placebo without telling them, so they won't do it in secret. And if they did and the person found out, they could probably sue them. There's actually research where people are told, well, what we're going to do is give you a placebo, a dummy pill, a sugar pill that has nothing in it. But we found that this is quite helpful, and the placebo response stays the same. Hmm. There's also studies where, um, like you'll see uh, TV ads for Abilify, which can be added to an antidepressant to kind of boost the effect of the antidepressant. And those are on TV quite regularly. Right. There's also research showing that if you're depressed and you're given a placebo, you respond a certain percentage of the time. When you add on another placebo that the person thinks is a second drug, it basically bumps the depression down as much as Abilify bumps down your depression when you're already taking an SSRI. So <clears throat> there's no question scientifically that these drugs are indistinguishable from placebo and from each other in terms of how well they work. But since you can't go and get placebo in our culture, you can go get antidepressants, they will work some of the time for some people. And for some people, they won't work at all. The kicker is then, what about the side effects? Right. There's a lot of side effects, which includes a lot of your sex drive just goes to zero, uh, nightmares, agitation, feeling restless, keyed up. And when you stop these antidepressants, you can get a noticeable withdrawal syndrome. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. Since psychiatrists don't want to really recognize that these drugs are addictive and cause withdrawal, they call this discontinuation syndrome to make it sound kind of softer and nicer. Right. But it's clear that the a lot of people have serious withdrawal from these drugs. So are the side effects really worth it? Well, maybe if you're one of the people who's a very good placebo responder, you take the antidepressant, you feel better, and you're one of the people who has minimal side effects, your insurance company pays for it, in a way you could live with that. But you're, the whole culture is kind of kidding itself. These drugs, in fact, do not work better than placebo, and in fact have lots of side effects, which can include being agitated, suicidal, homicidal, delirious, more than a placebo will cause. That also is proven scientifically. In terms of the chemical imbalance idea, where well, you have a chemical imbalance, you've got low serotonin, these drugs boost up your serotonin. Doctors say this over and over and over. It's in the drug ads. There's actually an antidepressant that's on the market in Europe that was first developed in France that's called a selective serotonin reuptake enhancer. So it's an SSRE. Instead of boosting serotonin, it boosts the reuptake, so it sucks the serotonin out of the synapse back into the nerve, so it reduces the serotonin level, but it's equally as effective as the ones that boost the serotonin level. And we have lots and lots and lots of research showing psychiatrists can't find any consistent problem in the serotonin system at all. It's just a marketing myth. And that's not surprising, because why would we think the antidepressants are working through serotonin if they don't work any better than placebo. Mm -hmm. We don't really need the serotonin effect at all. And that's proven by if you have a drug that boosts up serotonin, it doesn't work any better than one that knocks serotonin down. So you're saying that the message that's conveyed in TV commercials, that's conveyed to people and that even their doctor might tell them, is actually not backed by the scientific evidence? Well, let's look at another class of TV commercial. That is what I'm saying. So I've learned from watching TV ads that depression is a medical disease. It has certain symptoms. It's thought to be due to imbalance of serotonin. And you should talk to your doctor about these effective medications. That's what I've learned from TV ads. But it's not scientifically true. Here's something else I've learned from TV ads. If you're a guy and you really, really, really want to date supermodels, the number one thing you got to do is drink beer. Because supermodels just love guys who drink beer. Clearly proven by beer ads on TV. Mm -hmm. But it's obviously preposterous. We know that 
first of all, those supermodels are drinking the beer are not drinking a whole lot of beer because they're so thin. Mm -hmm. And they're not impressed by guys who are throwing up at the beer party. It's complete nonsense. Mm -hmm. It's not any more objectively, scientifically true what you see in an antidepressant ad. Very interesting. So we could kind of take with a grain of salt just about anything that we see in a TV commercial. And obviously when we see a Doritos commercial or whatever, we kind of know that you know, that isn't really true. But it's interesting that, you know, even in what is often kind of purported to be very medical and very scientific is is really not so much. This is just their marketing. Right. Instead of some good looking guy driving a car fast down the road, it's a guy who's got a lab coat on and seems like some sort of professional or doctor. Mm -hmm. It's all marketing. Interesting. So you spoke a minute ago about side effects and you mentioned um, sexual health side effects. In a previous video that we did a while back, we kind of touched on that subject. And one of the comments that was left on that video was that this is completely true. I was on antidepressants for all of these years. And actually, even now that I've been off of antidepressants for several years, he was still experiencing the same negative sexual health side effects. Now, that's something that I've heard of. And I actually was on a radio show with a guy who's kind of an expert in that. Uh, who's seen dozens and dozens and dozens of people. Uh, so the idea is, first of all, these drugs don't have that many side effects. Don't worry about it. Well, it turns out they do have a lot of side effects. And especially the SSRIs, dropping your sex drive way down to nothing. But as soon as you stop, you know, pretty soon the side effects will all go away and you'll be back to normal as far as your sex life is concerned. But now we're starting to see, hey, there's people where it doesn't come back for months and months and months and months. And then, of course, psychiatrists will say, well, that's because they're depressed. Low sex drive is a symptom of depression. But I'll bet you a lot of times it's a side effect of the drug. Mm -hmm. Just like when we go back 20 years with the antipsychotics, there's a lot of people with tardive dyskinesia, which is these twitching, grimacing kind of movements caused by antipsychotic medications. And when you stop the meds, the side effect gets worse and it lasts for years the rest of your life. So we already know, you know, within my professional practice lifetime, that there are psych meds that have severe side effects that can last your whole life. That's not unheard of. That's admitted to and recognized by everybody. Now we're starting to see maybe some of these SSRIs have long, long, long lasting sexual side effects. Of course, drug companies don't want to hear about that. Psychiatrists are by and large not wanting to hear about that. It's absolutely realistically possible. So what would you suggest to somebody who's received a mental health diagnosis or who's feeling depressed or maybe they're watching those commercials and they're thinking, man, I need to ask my doctor. What would you recommend? Well, first of all, depression is a very real problem. We haven't proven that it's a medical disease. We know antidepressants don't work that well, but it is a very real and serious problem. And we know a number of things that can be helpful. Exercise. It's hard to get good sleep when you're so depressed you can't sleep. But good exercise, good diet, good social relationships, good support, all those normal things that are good in life, good nutrition, good diet. In terms of treatment, I number one would say cognitive therapy is well proven to be effective. There's several other schools of therapy. So basically therapy. To take a look at what's happened in your life that's making you feel this way and what's happened in your life that's making you think this way about yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can work your way out of that. Antidepressants, you know, they're just here to stay in our culture for at least a while. People are going to get them from their doctors. Their doctors are going to tell them this is the way to go. I just wouldn't invest all my time and energy in meds. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd look into healthy lifestyle, emotionally, personally, psychologically, and psychotherapy. Interesting. And it's neat that you point out, you know, and in, in looking at someone who's depressed, you really do have to look at their history and look at what they've been through. And we've talked in several videos about trauma and especially childhood trauma and even sexual abuse and how those things play in. So that's definitely an important consideration for anybody in that situation. Right. Now, lots of people have been depressed and never been sexually abused. But if you have been sexually abused, it clearly at least doubles your risk of depression. So it's interesting that you would recommend those things because 
Psyche Truth, this channel was kind of founded on trying to give people alternatives of ways that they could improve their life or, or handle depression. And that's exactly what you'll find on our channel, information about exercise, workout videos, nutrition, all of these different things. So it's actually very, you know, helpful to hear that, you know, even from your perspective, those things really can be helpful for people. Right. And I think that's why you and I are doing these interviews together, because what my view of the world fits with the Psyche Truth view. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And thank you for joining me. I appreciate you coming and watching. If you liked this video, I hope that you will click on the like button and give me a thumbs up. Be sure to leave your comments, questions, and topic requests in the comment section below. And please, please, please subscribe to the Psyche Truth channel so that you can catch our future videos and check out all of our content discussing these topics and how you can improve your life and your health. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.